Hello everyone, welcome back to GIS. In the previous session, we were discussing on the major components of a GIS system. Among them, data is one of the major components of a GIS system. So, in today's session, we will look into what is a data in GIS, what are the major types of data, and what are the major characteristic features presented by such type of data? So, in general, a data is a raw and an unorganized fact that needs to be processed to make it meaningful. Data are the observations that we made from monitoring the real world. It will be really meaningless unless the data is processed and organized. There are two types of data used in GIS, the spatial data and an attribute data. The data that describes the location of a geographic feature or an entity is that of the spatial data, whereas the attribute data describes the characteristic feature of that spatial data. Let's look into what is a spatial data. A spatial data is that data that are referenced to a location on the earth. It is any data with direct or indirect reference to a specific location or a geographical area. Hence, this type of data is often referred to as a geographic data or a geospatial data. A spatial data allows the user to look at an area in relation to other areas. The spatial data consists of relative geographic information about the earth and its features. So, a spatial data is defined either by a pair of latitudes or longitudes, a projection system or the data which helps to locate a specific location on the earth. In GIS, the spatial data are represented in two ways, either as a raster data or as a vector data. A raster data is those data which are composed of grid cells with rows and columns. The whole geographic area under a raster data will be divided into groups of individual cells which represent an image or a feature. Take the case of a satellite image or our photographs or a scanned image that represents the raster data. At the same time, a vector data represents all features as points, lines and polygons and is generally applied to discrete objects with the defined shapes and boundaries. In a vector data format, the features have a precise shape and position with attributes and metadata. Now let's look into the major features or the characteristic features of a spatial data. The spatial data generally possesses three characteristic features that defines it. That is the coordinates, projection and a datum. Coordinates is a group of numbers used to determine the position of an entity in a space of given dimension with respect to a fixed reference or a system of lines. This is what we explain it through mathematical way. If you talk about a geographic way, coordinates are a set of values that shows an exact position on the surface of the earth. Thus, in geography, a coordinate system is a reference system that uses latitudes and longitudes to represent the location of an entity within a common geographic framework. Each coordinate system is defined by its measurement framework which is either geographic in which the spherical coordinates are measured from the center of the earth or 
it can be planimetric in which the earth's coordinate are projected into two dimensional planar surface it can be also defined by the units of measurement represented either in feet or meters or in decimals or in degree system or can be also defined by other measurement system properties such as a spheroid for reference a datum one or more standard parallels a central meridian and a possible shift in the x or the y axis there are two common types of coordinate system used in gis a geographic coordinate system and a projected coordinate system a geographic coordinate system uses three dimensional spherical surfaces to define the location on the earth a geographic coordinate system includes an angular unit of measure a prime meridian and a datum which will be generally based on a spheroid a spheroid defines the size and the shape of the earth model while the datum connects the spheroid to the earth in a gcs a point or an entity is referenced by a network of latitudes and longitude values this network of latitudes and longitudes is been termed as graticules the latitudes and the longitudes are the angles measured from the center of the earth to a point on the surface of the earth a projected coordinate system can be defined on a flat two dimensional surface unlike a gcs a projected coordinate system has constant length angle and areas across the two dimensions a pcs is always based on a geographic coordinate system that is based on a sphere or a spheroid in addition to a gcs a projected coordinate system includes a map projection a set of projection parameters that customize the map projection for a particular location and a linear unit of measure thus a geographic coordinate system defines where the data is located on the earth surface whereas a projected coordinate system describes the data how to draw on a flat surface like those on a paper map or on a computer screen a geographic coordinate system is generally round and hence it records location in angular units usually in the form of degrees while a projected coordinate system is flat and records its location in linear units map projection is the second important characteristic feature that should be presented by a spatial data you can define the projection as the process of transformation of the surface of the earth or a part of the earth surface to a plane surface maps are generally two dimensional in nature but the surface they represent are generally curved thus transforming the three dimensional space to a two dimensional map is the process of projection we know that our earth is round and resembles like a sphere therefore a globe is the true representation of the earth and provides three dimensional effect by preserving the shape size and direction of an area however we cannot use the globe conveniently at all the time as it is not possible to view all the countries at a glance it is also difficult to measure the distance due to its spherical nature hence it is necessary to transform the curved surface of the earth or the globe to a flat surface on a certain scale map projection thus involves the transformation of spherical network of latitudes and longitudes on a plane surface in most cases the projection formula generally uses mathematical or geometrical methods to derive the graticules however this process inevitably distorts one or more properties like that of shape area distance or the direction 
Now, let's look into what are the types of projection. Projection can be classified mainly on the basis of its properties or the projectional surface. On the basis of projectional properties, projections are classified into conformal projection or the orthomorphic projection that preserves the local shape and hence used to represent areas with lesser extent. The equiarial or the homolographic projection that preserves the area of the displayed projection. The equidistant projection that preserves the distance between certain points on the mapped area and an azimuthal or a true direction projection that maintain the direction or the azimuths of all points on the map correctly with respect to its center. Based on the projectional surfaces, the projection can be grouped as conical projection, cylindrical projection and zenithal projection. The conical projection is a projection where the developable surfaces uses a cone placed over a globe and so it touches. Whereas a cylindrical projection uses a cylinder as the developer surface placed over the globe. Mercator's projection is the most common type of cylindrical projection. And the zenithal projection or the planar projection where the projected map data into a flat surface touching the globe. In each category, there are several types of projections developed. And our ARC info supports our 46 type of projections. Now let's look into what is a datum. Datum is a mathematical model of the earth that gives the relationship of a coordinate system to that of the earth. It is generally defined by the size and the shape of the ellipsoid or the positioning of that ellipsoid in relation to the physical surface of the earth by an anchor point. You can find two types of data, a geodetic data and a reference data. A geodetic data is a reference from which the spatial references are made, whereas a reference data is a model of already known and constant surfaces which is used to describe the locational aspects. The common datum for a country requires a specific coordinates. For the orientation of axis of the coordinate system, a prime meridian must be defined from which the latitude or the longitudinal values are specified. Most geographic datum uses Greenwich as their prime meridian. A datum is thus a reference system in which the coordinates can be expressed through monumentation of points with non-coordinates. Most countries have their own local datums, but some countries have adopted WGS 1984 or the World Geodetic System 84 as their datum. It is a global datum based on the center of the earth mass as the anchor point. Georeferencing by GPS is based on WGS 1984 as their data. Now let's look into the second type of data that is an attribute data. Attributes are the non-spatial data associated with a point, line and area entities. Thus you can also term the attribute data as the thematic characteristic of a spatial data. Attributes are the characteristic of an entity. An attribute data is generally thus associated with three major spatial entities. Let's look into which are the major spatial entities. A point entity, a line entity, a polygon entity, and apart from that, you can find a surface entity. A point entity represents those geographic features that are too small to be depicted as lines or areas like buildings or a telephone post or a tower, etc. It can also be represented locations that have no area such as mountain peaks. 
a line entity represents those geographic features that are too narrow to be depicted as area such as streams railway lines etc a polygon entity are closed figures that represent the shape and location of homogeneous features such as soil types forest water bodies countries and so on besides that there is a surface entity that describes those features which has a value for every point on the earth take the case of elevation as every point on the earth has an elevation it makes us difficult to represent as it has no clear boundaries here the surfaces are typically represented on the maps as a series of isolines thus each spatial entity may have one or more attribute associated with it for example a point representing a building may have a number of attributes like a number of rooms name and address of the owner and so on an attribute data thus gives additional information about the character of an entity they also allow certain gis operations to be performed where the characteristic of entity is under scrutiny thus there are four types of attribute data these are the nominal data the ordinal data the interval data and the ratio data the nominal data scale or the nominal scale data is a naming scale where the variables are simply named or labeled with a no specific order it is also called the categorical variable scale as it is used for labeling variables into distinct classifications and does not involve any quantitative value or order this scale is thus the simplest among the four variable measurement scales of data thus a nominal data are generally used to establish the identity of a feature these numbers cannot be processed mathematically as they do not represent any order or relative value an ordinal scale data has all the variables in a specific order in addition to naming them thus an ordinal data is defined as a data that depicts the order of the variable but not about the relative size these are generally not used for mathematical expressions like frequency or to find the degree etc now let's look into the third scale of data that is the interval data in an interval data is a numerical data scale where the order of the variable is known as well as the difference between the variables thus the interval indicates the distance between two entities and explain the difference between two numbers in a meaningful way but these scale do not have a real origin or an absolute scale these scales are effective as they provide one to analyze the data statistically thus the interval data can be used for mathematical expressions and analysis it contains all the properties of an ordinate data in addition to difference between the variables the ratio data or the ratio scale data is the measurement that contains all the characteristic feature of an interval data in addition to absolute zero or a real zero so that the difference between the numbers is significant it is calculated by assuming that the variables have an option for zero the difference between the two variables is same and there is a specific order between the options with an option of real zero various statistical and descriptive analysis techniques can be applied to those variables friends i hope you have enjoyed today's session post your suggestions or queries in the comment box or in the google classroom i wish everyone a great day ahead